Hello, thanks for listening to the Finance Leadership Podcast. It's your focus on the latest information and news about the Finance Leadership Program. It's produced by AICPA and SEMA together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants. You can find out more at AICPA.org and SEMAglobal.com. As usual, you're listening to myself, Kevin Gormley, but today I am joined by a colleague, Nasheen Weisman, to talk about a new resource that we have for our students called the Little Book of Secrets and essentially a go-to reference guide for anyone who is studying case studies. So we'll jump in here, Nasheen, and tell me a little bit about yourself, first of all. Yes, of course, Kevin. I work in candidate progression, so my team and I are constantly innovating and creating resources for our candidates to support their progress through the qualification. So whether they're studying with a trained provider or doing it on their own, and wherever they are based globally, we aim to cater for everybody. So we create articles, run webinars, create specialist interview recordings, motivational videos, multiple well-being resources, lots and lots of tips and techniques on exam performance, and also some really fresh-looking content that we're, we are bringing out now to keep our CGMAs engaged, like the little book of secrets that we're going to talk about today. We aim to cover as many of the areas which will support someone's learning journey and to cater for everyone's needs. My background is mixed. I worked as an accountant. I worked as an auditor. But then I spent the majority of my career as a tutor for a training provider. In my 18 years of being a tutor, I've come across so many different students with so many different issues that learners face, and and everyone is so unique. So when we try to help someone through their studies, it's so important to appreciate someone's unique situation. So as a team, we try to bring that in and integrate that into the resources and tools that we create for our learners. Thanks for that, Shane. Obviously, as you mentioned, we, we have a, a lot of resources that your team delivered as part of the progression resources within the Finance Leadership Program. Anyone who is a student listening to this, I would stress that these are invaluable and we often get asked about these types of resources and students maybe haven't found them on the Finance Leadership Program or are not aware. So definitely take a look. So we're adding a new resource to this, which is the Little Book of Secrets. Could you tell us what it is? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So the Little Book of Secrets, as you mentioned, Kevin, it's our latest resource and it's specifically designed for candidates who are due to appear for their case study exams at any level of case study that you're doing. In my experience, the weeks building up to the exam can be really intense for candidates in in lots of ways. Everybody's different, right? And everyone has different commitments. Some candidates have a lot of time that they have available to focus in those weeks building up to the exams. Others have tried to focus as much as possible whilst juggling life, which can be really tough. So whatever the learning experience has been so far, it's hard to know what to do, what to focus on, what's important at that late stage. So the things that need to be focused on the skills and practices that are so important, we've included those in the little book of secrets. It's broken down into two parts. So if someone is really short on time, then we've got some really quick advice on the key skill areas to focus on so that everybody knows what's important. And in like 10 minutes, you can get some great advice by going through this. But if someone has more time, there is more detail to go into, and it's all within this one resource. The key feature of this, I would say, though, is that it contains the right information at the right time at your fingertips. So you don't really need to search for it at that late stage. And it's all there in a format that we believe will be engaging at a time when candidates need the engagement the most. And uh, obviously it being concise... And to the point is exactly what you need at that point of your study cycle. Exactly. Okay, so could you tell us a little bit about your view on applying knowledge in the case study exam? Sure, Kevin. So this is one of the key skills that examiners look for in the case study exam. Yes, you have your theory from your level of learning. And yes, they want you to demonstrate that you know that theory. However, not by just stating the facts not by regurgitating technical concepts and knowledge that you've learned. Even if 
even if it's the right technical concept, they don't want it simply restating. What they want is they want to see your ability to be an advisor, to be the person that someone would expect you to be in the role of a CGMA qualified accountant. So it's a matter of taking the technical knowledge that relates to the situation presented to you in the case and to pull out the relevant parts of it, link it practically to the case study situation. Linking together the pre-seen, the unseen, and showing that you understand why that theory is relevant here. That's really what they're looking for. That's what they give you marks for, not simply the theory. That's what application is. So this is an area which can be bewildering. And some candidates feel they did really well in their exam because they identified and wrote about all the relevant theories and concepts, but they find they didn't pass. And a lot of that comes down to application. They needed to demonstrate that and maybe they didn't do it as well. But also this skill of application, it needs practicing too in the build-up to the exam. Yeah, it's so important. Being everything you know about a subject doesn't get you a pass at this level. Simple as that. No. So when preparing for that exam, what would your advice be 24 hours before the actual exam? Um, there are things like skills and advice that a candidate would have been given and they'd read it so many times in the months leading up to the case study exam to be prepared. But that same advice can mean a lot more at this sensitive time, like you said, in the sort of the 24 hours before the exam. It's a bit like on social media. You see adverts for the teeth whitening, yeah? And you scroll past it, probably get frustrated by it. I know that I do. But then when you decide you want to whiten your teeth, then you go looking for it and you try to search for it and you can't find what you're looking for and now you haven't got time to search. It's the same sort of thing. All of these resources are there for candidates to have a look through, but to know what to do, what key to focus on in those last 24 hours or so, they are in the little book of secrets. So these pieces of advice, we've pulled them out. What to do in the last 24, maybe 48 hours before the exam. All of those bits that are relevant to you at that time. So I would recommend that it's a good idea to look at the little book of secrets a little further in advance so that you can plan ahead for those last 24 hours. We consider it very important to decide what you want to do in that time, like I said, ahead of time. But making sure that candidates are being realistic about it. We need to make sure that there are things that a candidate needs to focus their attention on at that time. They need to remind themselves to make sure it's fresh in their mind before they go into the exam. It's not quite the time to learn new topics or tackle something that they've struggled with through their learning journey. Their efforts need to help put them into a confident, motivated state of mind. So revising, practicing, looking over things, testing yourself, getting some sleep, eating well, keeping hydrated to keep your brain at hot form. These are all really key. But making sure that they've planned all of this ahead of time really helps. It can help towards that confident and motivated state of mind that we're hoping for to make sure that candidates are able to perform the best that they can on the day. And obviously a source of knowledge and learning is listening to what other students have experienced. And we see things written, we see case studies, we see testimonials, but what did learners tell us about their case study experience? Past learners are so important to us, Kevin. We can all talk about our personal experiences and how we did in our exams and what studying was like for us. But the more people we hear from today, the more we are able to understand our candidates and the challenges they face now in the social economic environment that we live in today, the better really. So our past learners have all been very clear on what they feel got them through the case study exams. And, and when you hear them, you'll see that they all talk about the positive outcome of being prepared. They talk about how important planning was, about visualizing themselves in the scenario, the case study scenario. They talk about practicing using mocks, practicing allocating times to different requirements when they do these these mocks. So they got used to using this great time management school as tool in advance of going into the actual exam. And it's so inspiring to hear them talk about their own experiences. We've got some snippets of them talking about these in the little book of secrets as well. We're so grateful 
to get our past candidate input to help us develop and create more resources for everybody, really. Not that surprising because people know the challenge to get through any accounting qualification and when they do so, they're actually very, very good at helping others. What do the examiners generally say about the case studies? I know it's hard to believe that the examiners are pretty reasonable, <laughs> uh, or, but they are, they are. Or, or maybe, you know, maybe when we're learning, we just don't want to believe it because it's quite nice to think of the examiner as an enemy. It kind of helps to to blame someone for having to sit these long case study exams, but they are, they are actually pretty reasonable. They don't try to trip you up. They are very clear on what skills they want to see in the script and also clear on how to actually produce an answer that demonstrates those skills. So in the vast years of experience that they have had in their roles, and they're very open about the common pitfalls that they see that candidates make, and and, and they try to advise you on how to avoid them. Um, it's very common that they see candidates not answering the question set. I think this is one of the biggest pitfalls that candidates face. Instead, they might go ahead and answer a question they wanted to be asked or answering a question that they are able to write more on, more prepared for, if you like. And it really isn't about quantity. It's, it's very much about the quality. So even writing a little against the question that has been asked for will go a long way compared to doing an alternative. They've also seen many candidates overplan their answers so much so that they don't have enough time to produce a comprehensive answer. An answer that they were more than capable and were all set to write, but they spent too long planning it. I mean, this is not to say planning is not important. It's very important. And the examiners say so as well. But it is a skill to actually keep it brief. Have it more as, as a trigger, a more of a, a reminder of what to write and a reminder of how you want to structure your answer. And that is what planning should be. So it's very, very important not to not to over plan. Now, speaking of the structure, this is something they are quite clear on as well. That the body of the answer shouldn't really have any bullet points in it, especially if a particular format has been requested in the task. Let's face it, we sometimes start off with good intentions and we keep to the requested format and then time just gets away from you in the exam and you need to wrap it up, then of course, get your last few points down as bullet points. You, you know, in those last few desperate minutes, the examiner can always see where you have rushed the end of an answer and they understand. They really do. Uh, so I've got flashbacks to degree A-levels and GCSEs on that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> your point on bullet points may be a surprise. Um, a lot of students have always voiced to me that the most effective way to articulate a message is through bullet points because then you don't have obviously the syntax or the vocabulary to worry about. But when you're instructed to do something and you don't follow it, then you're going to lose marks. Exactly. I think a key here is it's important to write something, even as though it was a bullet point, to keep it brief, like you said, but just don't use the bullet point that takes away from the format. We sound like teachers, but people don't read the question. It's just such a common challenge for everyone. And that... Obviously, the nerves and the panic that set in. People look at the screen and they decipher something that's actually not written. So uh, finally, could you tell us just a little about what's available on the resource library? Yeah, sure, sure. So there are too many to mention, Kevin. They really are. But the resource library is the place to go where we have all of our resources in there for candidates to explore and to use to match their needs. So subject topic specific webinars, as I've mentioned before, we have recorded ones, live ones, exam tips, study techniques, well-being resources. We've got new resources going in there all the time, like little motivational engagement videos with study guides in there, depending on what level somebody is studying for. So not just the case study level, other levels as well um, have guidance um, for, for learners to get them through their journey. There's just so much to choose from. And we are forever adding more new content in there as well. So it's great to just go and have a look in there. Yeah, there is a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of resource goes into making these for students so please do use them. They are important. Thanks, Oshin, again for coming on to the podcast today. I appreciate your time. It's been a pleasure, Kevin. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And there's plenty more to explore about the topic on the show notes. So what we'll include is links to resources and anything that we feel that will be of value to students to have a look at. For more information on the Finance Leadership Programme, go to enroll.cgma.org or go to aicpa-cmit.com. Thank you for listening. Till the next time, hope you have a good day. Goodbye.
This content is designed to provide illustrative information with respect to the subject matter covered and does not represent an official opinion or position of the ARCPA, the Association or SEMA. It is provided with the understanding that they are not engaged in offering legal accounting or other professional services. If such advice or expert assistance is required, the services of a competent professional person should be sought. The ARCPA, the Association and SEMA make no representations, warranties or guarantees as to and assume no responsibility for the content or application of the material contained herein and especially disclaim all liability for any damages arising out of the use of, reference to or reliance on such material.